Today, we're going to talk about how a lipid panel can be a strategic tool to measure your metabolic health. And when I, when I speak about metabolic health, I'm talking about how well your body is utilizing certain nutrients like glucose, are you at risk for insulin resistance, heart disease, things like that. So let's get started. So first of all, when you think about the lipid panel, let's just get a quick overview of what that is exactly. And I'm just going to grab this here, right? So it's going to measure, it's also known as a cholesterol panel. It measures various types of lipoproteins that carry cholesterol and triglycerides like LDL, HDL, VLDL, things like that, and also triglycerides, which are the fats in your blood. And these together can be utilized to really determine your metabolic health. So here's a few things that you may have not heard of before, how you can utilize your lipid panel. First of all, there's a thing called, number one, there's a lipid accumulation product, or LAP for short. So basically, it's derived from your waist circumference and your blood triglycerides. Um, it can actually be a very really powerful marker for diagnosing metabolic, metabolic syndrome, which I think probably a lot of people have already heard about. But these include risk factors like increased risk for cardiovascular disease and diabetes. So LIP has been shown to have diagnostic accuracy, a really high diagnostic accuracy for metabolic syndrome. Um, there's a particular program uh, or the criteria for the National Cholesterol Education Program. We'll get to how to calculate the lipid accumulation product first, but I want to just keep on going. What else does a lipid panel provide? Well, it gives you a prognostic value, right, in your cardiovascular health. So um, it measures, like I mentioned, total cholesterol, triglycerides, and different types of those lipoproteins, the VLDL, LDL, and HDL, and those can really determine if you're at higher risk for things like the number one killer of men and women in the United States is heart disease. It also can tell you if you're at higher risk for liver fat uh, accumulation, right? So liver fat percentage. There's not really a mathematical calculation without the use of imaging, but um, it can be predicted through markers in your lipid panel independently associated with metabolic syndrome beyond traditional factors like calculating your visceral fat area. So that's another thing we'll get into um, liver fat accumulation or liver, liver fat percentage here in just a minute. But it's also, I just want to mention, it's a predictive value for other conditions. So beyond cardiovascular disease and metabolic health, lipid panels um, are being explored for the predictive value in things like breast cancer, um, which may be at higher, will show that you're at higher risk for getting certain types of cancers. So that is one thing. Next, let's talk about that lipid accumulation product, which you can actually calculate. And then we'll talk about the cutoffs and what those mean. So the lipid accumulation product, which I mentioned was LAP, is basically incorporates your waist circumference. So remember, waist circumference is a good indicator of if you have visceral fat, if you're accumulating visceral fat or that dangerous uh, inflammatory fat that's being stored in places that we don't want it to be. So remember, there are the subcutaneous fat, which is under the skin to store fat for a rainy day or energy for a rainy day. Because back in the days of our ancestors, there were days of fasting and days of famine. Well, famine doesn't come to visit us anymore. We are always in a fasting mode, or excuse me, <laughs> in a feasting mode. So when you actually think about the body's capacity, right, there is going to be a limited capacity of storage of fat. Now, this is typically derived by a, via genetics and ethnicity and different things. So once you've hit or gone past the storage capacity, of your subcutaneous fat, it becomes insulin resistant, right? So insulin tells the body, hey, I need to store fat. The subcutaneous fat's like, doors are closed, dude. I'm not listening to you anymore. I got my own problems here. They're overflowing. And so what happens is the body starts storing this fat in other places called visceral fat or ectopic fat, like places in your liver and your muscles, which make you further insulin resistant, which further catapults you towards diabetes, and more inflammatory um, issues like that can lead to worsening heart disease and stuff like that. So when you're calculating LAP, there's a little bit different formula for men and women. So for men, it's the waist circumference in centimeters minus 65 times triglycerides. And then for women, it's waist circumference minus 58 times triglycerides. And basically um, it estimates the lipid accumulation in the body which again is a risk factor for your metabolic syndrome. 
And when you think about the um, interpreting these values, so higher values indicate a greater accumulation of lipids within the abdominal region, which is associated with higher risk, again, of the metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, which makes it harder to lose weight as well. Um, now, the lower LAP suggests a lower lipid accumulation and therefore lower risk. So when you think about um, what we consider high or normal, a higher percentile is considered above the 75th percentile of the population. I'm going to run down here real quick to my notes and tell you. So for men, a commonly referenced um, cutoff is 30 units or higher. And for women, 22 units or higher. And again, so this can vary. There may be um, some changes in this particular uh, calculation based on where you live in the world, your particular race. But in general, 30 for men, 22 for women. So anything above those cutoffs, you are going to be at higher risk. So I thought this was really interesting. It's not something commonly discussed is the LAP. Um, so what are some other things if you don't want to do the LAP or can't? You can utilize a BMI, right? So this is a body mass index um, and waist circumference. However, it doesn't really give you an insight into your fat versus lean muscle mass, different types of uh, concentrations, right? So you're thinking about your body uh, fat comp composition. That's a really important factor to consider. You can do a DEXA scan or it's a little bit uh, more expensive, but if you really want to get down to see exactly what your body is comprised of, you know, free fat versus lean muscle mass, that's one way to do it as well. Um, you can also do things like a waist to hip ratio, which I've spoken about previously in other videos. Next, I just want to quickly highlight um, the liver fat percent because I know a lot of people have been diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver, which puts you at higher risk for inflammation uh, in the liver and potentially cirrhosis and liver carcinoma, cancer in the liver. So this is something that starts with insulin resistance, right? So the body is like, hey, I can't store anymore over here. It starts depositing fat in other places. Um, and we start getting this inflammation. We start getting more insulin resistance. And all of these factors, hormonal shifts and everything, start leading to a spiraling out of control health. And the lipid panel can be a great measure of if you're making progress, also if you're doing any type of um, lifestyle interventions. So when you think about determining if your liver has um, fat, that it shouldn't be there. Again, like I mentioned, you're typically using like things like an MRI or a magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Oh my goodness. Spect Let's start over. Spectroscopy. There we go. Or an ultrasound. These don't give you an exact percentage, but um, basically there's a, here's an example calculation. So they'll, what they do is use the um, MRI and based on the signal intensity ratio between, let's say, the spleen and the liver, right? So you would look at the signal intensity of the liver and the signal intensity of the spleen or some other reference, and then you basically determine that ratio. And if the signal is greater, you have more fat. So anyway, um, don't want to go down too many into the weeds so that I am not a radiologist. I don't calculate these. I'm just giving you some highlight evidence here. So in summary, um, the lipid panel, which I had mentioned yesterday in the video, is one of the five key labs that you should be utilizing to measure your metabolic health. If you'd like to learn more, I also have a free masterclass called The Five Steps to Master Your Metabolism and Lose Weight. And I should say you can also talk, re watch it to determine um, how you can utilize the same type of lifestyle interventions to improve your cholesterol. And so if you're struggling with high cholesterol, struggling to lose weight, or you're just tired, <laughs> just not understanding why, or you've been told you're insulin resistant or pre-diabetic or have type 2 diabetes, this is the masterclass for you. I also speak to the four biggest mistakes that people make in their weight loss journey. Having worked with thousands of patients over a couple of decades of being a physician myself, I really honed in on what is working for folks. And that's why I'm working so hard to help this along this way. So as always, um, there is a link below to register for the masterclass. If you're watching on Instagram, it is in the bio. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, tomorrow I'll be back with another one of the five key labs to look and measure your metabolic health. And like I said, don't forget to register for the free masterclass that's running right now. Um, 
in the link below. And as always, thank you for being here. I appreciate you for spending time with here. I'm sending you joy, love, peace, and healing as for always. We always need more healing in this world. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Have a good one. Bye.